Hey everybody, Chad from Patriot Astro, and I'm just going to take us on a quick trip down memory lane and maybe give you something you can look up in your spare time. Uh, we have a lot of new people in the hobby, and they are doing amazing things with cell phone cameras. And we're always shocked at the quality that they can pull out of some of these images when we have these large aperture telescopes combined with cooled monochrome cameras and filter wheels, autofocusers, etc. Uh, but I want to remind you of where we came from in the hobby as well. And, and many of you may not know this, but when I started um, in astrophotography, and it wasn't that many years ago, we were trying to do things with webcams, right? So specifically, a couple of the Philips webcams were very popular. And we had to use an adapter like this to connect them to our telescope. And I don't know if you can see just how weird this piece is and how small that hole is but we were screwing these into webcams and then using the webcam to capture images so just as a rainy day project here if you feel like going down memory lane some of you have been in uh, the hobby as long as i have now i took a, a several year break in the middle mostly born out of the frustration i'm about to show you uh, but uh, some of you may not be aware of this right so this is the type of camera I started imaging with. Um, actually, it was the model previous to this, so it wasn't the Pro 2, but this is the Philips um, to you cam, and it's it's a webcam, right? It's an early webcam, um, and it was just found at some point that they were adaptable to astrophotography, right? It was something that we could connect to a telescope. So if you look at the specs of this particular camera, um, and again, this is model two, right? We're talking about a quarter inch sensor diagonal, decent pixel size, but the image format and quantum efficiency, right? The QE is just trash. So uh, they weren't fantastic and it was quite a battle um, to get anything to work with these, let alone, we're talking about old Windows OSs, we're talking about early USB, we're talking about all kinds of other issues you could have just trying to get it all to work. Then think about all the other software you need to support the processing and the data collection. You know, everything you have today is fairly mature. We're talking about very early versions of those software suites. So here are some other uh, versions of the webcams that a lot of people used out there. So the two cams, the quick cams, um, some of these may look familiar to some of you, even just as a webcam, right? I know the quick cam sold extremely well some of you may have it sitting in your garage or up in the attic right now, but uh, there were a lot of people that were trying to do um, astrophotography with these. Now you compare these to what we have today, and this is just an uncooled color camera from ZWO, right? The 224MC, very popular. Still a very small diagonal, but, but much better resolution, much better quantum efficiency. I guarantee you the full well depth is better. Um, USB 3, right? So very, very powerful to think that we've come from, you know, just trying to make things work um, in the digital realm and then finally getting to something, you know, even up into the 2600 uh, mm range, right? We're really pushing the limits of uh, what we can do today at a af somewhat affordable price. I won't necessarily say it's affordable, but it's a somewhat affordable price when you start comparing it to um, off-the-shelf cameras, right? We're looking at things that can cool to very low temperatures. Great QEs, great full well, perfect pixel sizes for types of objects that we want to capture. Fantastic resolution. But again, think where we came from, right? This is what my telescope looked like at the time. Um, this was not my telescope. Uh, in this particular picture, I'll actually share all these links in the description below. Uh, if you want to do a little bit of your own research and just kind of stroll down memory lane with me here but what we have here is the two cam connected with a special adapter into the telescope and again we had these usb cables that were hanging off and, and several of the webcams had hardwired usb cables right that, that came right out of the camera so there wasn't a lot you could do with them you couldn't adapt the cable length it was just you were stuck with what you had um, and it, it was a bit of a challenge certainly um, here's another model of a, a webcam connected. Um, again, it was sort of amusing to look at, but, you know, we were pretty proud of making this stuff work. Um, you know, this is uh, some old archived websites I found. Now, this is a picture from March 6, 2003. 230 images stacked with the first model to UCAM Pro. 
And, you know, that's actually pretty impressive when you think about it, right? The red spot, some of the moons, um, really interesting. When you look at this, right, some deep space objects from 2002 in a heavy light pollution area with a webcam. If you think you're struggling with image acquisition and processing today, you really don't know the half of it. I really, I did shelf this hobby for five, six years um, just because it was so difficult to get all the components to work. If you think you need patience now, you don't know the half of it. Um, you know, look at this occultation of Saturn and the moon, right? If we go into some of the pictures there, that's a, that's a pretty impressive picture to think that this was an early webcam um, from quite a long time ago, right? I mean, this is 2007, so this is really impressive. And just to kind of put these years as a into a, a frame of reference, right? If I look at PhD Guiding, this is an early PhD Guiding website from Stark Labs. PhD2 was announced and came out in 2014. And if we go back here, we can actually go back on this page through some of the earlier versions, right? So if I go back, um, we get to a point where they stop telling us the years, they just didn't track it early on. But if I go back a little bit further here, uh, 1.7 I think is the last one they tell us it's Leopard compatible, right? And this is 2007, and this was PhD 1, right? This is not even PhD 2 guiding, this is early PhD. I mean, look at version 1.6 of P, uh, PhD guiding, right? Full Vista compatibility. That was a huge mistake, right? They should have just stuck with XPSP2. So um, again, just, you know, it, as you continue to battle this and as you continue to, you know, do everything you can to streamline your image acquisition and get better and better at processing, just know it always gets easier over time. And all of that knowledge and all of that experience that you are building and collecting and putting together will reap huge benefits in the future. Um, as cameras get better, as the software gets better, as the tracking gets better, as everything gets easier, your skill set and your knowledge, uh, your ability to problem solve, the patience you have today is going to go that much further in the future. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. If you didn't know that this was something that was happening quite a few years ago. Uh, but, you know, if you're interested, take a look in the description. I'll put some of the links there. Um, if you have any experience with this, if you remember doing this yourself, share that info in the comments, right? It'd be interesting to hear about your experience as well. Um, maybe some of you wrote it through and, and worked a little harder than I did, but, um, you know, I just had to put it on the shelf for a little while, but I'm back and I'm glad to say that I, uh, um, came back and, and was just reinvigorated by all of the software like Nina and everything that's out there. It's just the, the, the community is fantastic. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this and I'll try to find more things like this in the future. Um, take a look at it if you have a chance. It's just a fun little side project, something to look at when you're uh, next stuck with some cloudy skies. But uh, anyway, hopefully it's interesting. Let me know if you had experience with this as well in the comments. Um, I can be honest with you, this is part of the reason I shelved this hobby for about five or six years is the frustration uh, that I had with this. So uh, if you had the same experience, let me know. Um, for all of you that are new to the hobby, welcome aboard. And uh, you're doing amazing things with whatever technology you have. Just keep at it, keep plugging away, and uh, share your pictures for everyone to enjoy. Thanks again. We'll talk soon.